Hello guys, I'm so happy in Florent to introduce you to a very good friend and amazing luthier or instrument maker. This is Alfred Woll. Welcome Alfred, so nice to see you here. And uh, you guys uh, probably recognize that I'm playing, you know, this mandolin, which is made by Alfred and also uh, my Baroque mandolin, which you saw on the monthly message. So I'm so happy Alfred came because he lives in south of Germany and he had uh, some business to do in uh, Holland. And so on the way there and in between, he came to Wuppertal to visit me and uh, Mike. And uh, so we are uh, so happy to have you here, Alfred. Hello, everybody. I'm, uh, as Katharina says, I'm Alfred Woll and I'm making mandolin since about yeah, 30 years. And so we're going to talk a bit about mandolins right yes. now. So how long do we know each other? I think we met at uh, 1993 or some, somewhere around there. Mm, it's yeah. a long time. Yeah. And usually we speak German to each other. So yeah. that's a little bit strange now to speak English. But um, we, we do it for you guys so that you can understand us and we don't have to put subtitles mm -hmm. under the conversation. Yeah. And I, uh, I remember when I met Katharina first, uh, she was uh, still a student and uh, I made my first attempts in uh, the classical mandolin building and then I had uh, often Katharina playing my instruments, giving me feedback and uh, so through that we developed a quite good relationship. Yes, and I was uh, always... Um loving to experience with uh, different instruments and every time uh, I could change something on the mandolin and I could uh, play the mandolin for quite a long time. Sometimes when you go to a festival and you check out all this mandolin, it's, it's very loud around and, and then it's also hard to immediately say, oh yeah, I love this instrument or you don't know how it's reacting uh, at home or in different environment or when you play a concert. Uh, if it's you know becomes yours and so it's nice to have an instrument for like a longer period for a few weeks so that you can really see in each mood and also with the uh, weather when it's more moisty rainy or sunny it always affects the instrument because it's made by wood right. right and for me it was always interesting if it's played by a real good player who also uh, really uh, plays hard on it and often and strong <laughs> So then I can see how an instrument unfolds and what can come out of the instrument after some time. Yeah, so Alfred, we, I will just ask you some questions which I maybe think uh, also would interest um, my Mendo uh, students. So this, um, we call this in Germany um, a classical mandolin, yeah? so Neapolitanische Mandoline, so Neapolitan mandolin, and uh, you guys um, know this as a ball back mandolin, yeah? Uh, and it's very quite different to the uh, American style mandolin. Maybe we can uh, take this mandolin. Can you reach it? There's my cell phone. Boom. <laughs> so I got uh, here this instrument from Mike just to, to see, um, yeah, it's very obvious the difference, yes? Uh, but uh, we talked about that, uh, yeah, this is a carved, it's carved out of one piece, right? Right. The, uh, the Gibson mandolins, the bluegrass mandolins, they are made of solid pieces of wood and you carve the shape of the mandolin, of the top and also of the back, you carve it out of solid pieces of wood. So it's um, a working process like you make a, mandl a violin. So that is the specific uh, construction of a bluegrass mandolin and compared to that the Bowlback mandolin, mm -hmm. as it origins from Ita Italy, it's made of small segments, stripes, and is put together to form a bowl. And the top is flat and candid. So I don't know if you can see that, that we have here. Uh, it's a little corner, uh, which like have, uh, it's, how do you call this in English? <laughs> candid. Candid, wow, yeah. I learned a new word. So, mm. yeah, so that are 
the major construction details of a Neapolitan mandolin. And this particular one is a modern mandolin, so it comes from the 70s. It was uh, developed in Germany by uh, Reinhold Seifert. He invented that kind of shape and from the sound qualities it had specific qualities which uh, was more and more liked in Germany. So this instrument became a kind of standard model for the modern mandolin player. Mm. I can maybe just give a little example. I even have a, um, a pick, like a, an American style pick when I... Oh, here's another pick in the mandolin, so this wouldn't sound too good. So if I... my own pick on the same mandolin now. It has a very beautiful warm sound um, and here the whole uh, construction is of course Yeah, and more yeah. Uh, silvery maybe in the sound, I would say. Because when I play this mandolin and I don't completely uh, compare it to this, um, then I always think it's a very warm, dark sound. Yeah, compared to the Italian mm -hmm. style uh, modern mandolin, like Pandini is an instrument maker where it's very, very bright. But it also depends on the strings and everything and the pick. Which, yeah. yeah. But right now I thought, oh, that's uh, a little bit lighter, uh, brighter sound, yeah. yeah. And so, how, how long do you need um, to build this mandolin? I um, make actually about 15 mandolins a year. Mm -hmm. and, but in between I do also restorations and repairs. So, yeah, it takes me about a month until I get a mandolin like that ready. Mm -hmm. 